Hi, my name is uh, John Chiefcap. I'm the FNMI District Coordinator. And we decided to try something here at Chinook, uh, I believe as well, last year. And what we decided was to incorporate an Indigenous perspective into the curriculum. And when we're talking about Indigenous perspective, we're basically talking about nature as the original classroom. And we all connect with nature in a different way. So what we decided is that we decided to combine uh, Aboriginal studies and social studies together. And then the issue starts to become uh, about shared learning and shared insights. Because we all connect to nature in a unique way. So we found that those were our starting points of understanding and, and inquiry. And so how do you work with that process into a curriculum as well as an Indigenous perspective? And so what I found is that teachers and students um, became a very learning component to that process. Uh, this process is, is about shared learning. And really, where are the teachers' starting points about Teacher Quality Service 5, about truth and reconciliation? So it starts with a discussion, and it starts with what sharing and learning is about. But it's also about looking at process, and basically process of nature and process of curriculum. So when you combine it, you have a huge spectrum to work with. And so we were able to look at that spectrum starting about 200 years ago to today. So now learning and interaction takes place with everyone on many different levels. Well, hi, I'm uh, Kenny <laughs> Fuglerud. I teach social studies here at Chinook High School. Um, in looking at uh, why I'm here today, I wanted to discuss you know, how the journey started about uh, a year and a half ago when the opportunity to team teach Social 10-1 and Aboriginal Studies with John Chiefcap came about. I was uh, very keen and eager to jump at the opportunity, though I realized that I was, uh, my teaching ability in the subject matter was very inadequate. So it was nice to have an expert alongside with John, and uh, jumping into an issue was uncomfortable to start because, uh, as all teachers know, or have taught in the past a class that they aren't ready to teach, um, it can be stressful. But uh, my experiences are one of very, um, very positive and one that I really look back to and are thankful for. Um, we looked at doing some ceremonial components like berry soup ceremonies um, as kind of an introduction and an icebreaker. Um, we followed other people on their journey in shows like First Contact brought to you by APTN. Um, and then, you know, it was nice to be able to go and have experiences like field trips out on the reserve um, we went out to standoff in Sepoy Elementary School where I brought my class of 10-1 students um, and let them experience what exactly life on the reserve is like uh, compared to here. And um, yeah, it was overall it was a very good experience and one that I, I, I value and, and to be quite honest with you, on my own volition have continued beyond just the class. So in the summer and friendships with John and friendships with other people. So. Um, yeah, students uh, in my class, Linda He and Izzy Forbes, um, also here to talk about their experience. So um, I went into the Aboriginal Studies class and the Social Studies uh, combined class not actually really knowing what it was about and um, I knew people from last semester who took it and they uh, told me about their experiences and I actually didn't know that I was going to take it. But, um, actually throughout the semester I learned a lot and I feel like I gained a lot more than I would from just a typical social class. We had a variety of uh, experiences, as Kenny mentioned, um, from the berry soup ceremony to start and um, we built a teepee and we went to Sepoi. And what I really took away was, well, I mean, in the beginning I feel like I didn't really, like, understand. Um, like aspects of Aboriginal culture. Um, like I obviously knew there's a tie to nature, but I didn't realize how significant that was. And through those experiences and kind of treating the earth as like an equal or even more than that um, was really kind of eye-opening for me and um, just very different from the way that I was, I don't know, I, I guess I perceived it originally. I'm Izzy Forbes and I was in the Social 10-1 Aboriginal Studies course. Um, I really enjoyed the course overall. Um, it really um, opened my worldview up. I know that's what the outcome of the whole course was supposed to be, but through the experience that we had, 
um, going to the Sipuwe school um, and the berry soup so ceremony and the teepee and even just going outside. Um, engaging in nature and um, being part of nature. It really um, changed my worldview, I guess, in that now I have more of an open mind towards other cultures um, and Aboriginal cultures and Blackfoot culture and just being able to experience that was a privilege to me and I get to share that with my family and other students and hopefully this can continue on and create other opportunities for other students. With that in the journey of Social 10-1, one of the biggest things that we had learned was that there's going to be frustrations and growing pains and um, it was nice to have John there to definitely help me out through those uh, frustrating and tough times. But at the end, we had, uh, you know, it, it came to fruition at the very end with an interview process where students had to, um, you know, discuss and talk about their, their experiences in Social 10-1 and Aboriginal Studies and um, the content that they were able to provide and the responses which were authentic and, and, and caring and knowledgeable. And it, it was actually incredible to see the growth that had occurred throughout the course of the semester. So the experiences that we saw in that course versus the traditional 10-1 course um, is, is something that was pretty valuable. So my name is Lita Layton and I teach at Chinook High School in the English department. And um, in terms of the projects that I undertook with John, uh, we had a few different uh, areas of focus. So uh, truly the starting point for me was an awareness of TQS5 and a sense that I wasn't actually sure where I wanted to take that and I wasn't actually sure what resources I personally could even bring to that. So um, accessing John as a resource was invaluable. Um, but this idea of foundational knowledge is something that I feel like I'm continuing to grow in and wanting to demonstrate that um, anxiousness to grow for students and give students an opportunity to grow theirs too. Um, the whole concept of nature being connected and all of us being connected uh, made me want to go beyond in English courses just studying an Indigenous text and I wanted to have students rather develop an ability to establish an Indigenous lens through which they can view any text, whether it's by an Aboriginal author or not. So um, that was my big impetus in starting out on this journey. Um, and while I did incorporate uh, texts emphasizing uh, Blackfoot philosophy and Indigenous peoples like uh, First Contact, the documentary series, and Indian Horse, the fictional film, really what I have been asking students to do is adopt that lens that they've been learning about. So um, I've, over the period of time, I've developed this sensibility that we all have our own point of entry into this process. We as teachers each bring a certain perspective and measure of experience that influences the way we address it. But we have to extend that same measure of respect also to the students that are sitting in our classes. And I think if students feel comfortable and confident in the perspective that they bring initially, then it allows them to step in at a point that they feel comfortable stepping into. And I think really the motivation is moving students forward from whatever that starting line might be. Um, because I don't even know if any of us understands what the finish line even looks like. So um, with students uh, writing from different perspectives and feeling like they had a little bit of more freedom to use the perspective on their own terms, um, with Indian Horse at the 30 level, uh, that looked like a personal response to text and context. Um, where they could adopt a personal perspective, critical pr perspective, creative perspective with an understanding of reader's response, critical theory as a foundation, and an Indigenous lens of Blackfoot philosophy as a critical foundation. And then at the 20 level, incorporating that um, looked like evaluating documentary film first contract and considering not only from personal perspective, but also from critical perspective and having different microscopes that they could look at those individuals in that series. So um, I also used it at the grade nine level as well in a little bit of a different way. And I did that in collaboration with a couple of other teachers. And so I'm thinking that Deandra might want to talk about the, our experience with the nines in terms of how we um, tried to integrate uh, the TQS5 for them. 
Hi, my name is Deandra Sullivan and I teach at Chinook High School in the English department. Um, as a staff, when we started to talk about TQS5 and ways that we wanted to approach it and collaborate with it, um, I instantly went to a place of learning and seeking more knowledge. I can understand the apprehension that some educators feel and and I understand that my own perspective as a learner and as an artist has been really a vehicle that I've decided to take this in. And in my own conversations with John, who really was a consultant for me, but also just a conversation partner, my experience as an artist and as a teacher and as a learner has really shaped sort of how I've tried to incorporate TQS5 into my classroom and in the conversation I've had with my with my peers. And um, one of the things that I've done, I've collaborated with other teachers as well, and Lita mentioned this earlier, is that we decided to bring an Indigenous perspective into our grade nine English language arts class. And one thing that we asked of our students uh, was a semester long anthology project in which they selected their own theme, their own focus, their own unifying effect of the texts they chose and responded to. Um, but one of the things we asked of them along the way was to include Indigenous perspective in their response or how they choose to show their anthology. And this was really open-ended to them, I would argue. We gave them lots of points of entry to do this. But one thing that was really invaluable in the process was asking John to come in and share Blackfoot ways of knowing and philosophy with our students. And he shared lots of concepts and stories and this idea of stories really resonated with our students. And I feel that this idea of sharing stories has actually really taken a stronghold in my teaching pedagogy now. And this idea that sharing stories is something I can do from my own perspective, which I hope gives my students the encouragement to do that as well. And you can see this in a language arts classroom in terms of reader response, right? That our perspective can help determine what we see. But one thing that we did in this collaboration with John is we created a list, I suppose, of possible points of entry to help our grade nines facilitate Indigenous perspective in their own project. And some example of those were, what is your connection to nature? What does this text speak to your connection to nature about? Um, this idea of dreams, what do you think the poet was dreaming? What does this text make you dream about? And I've really taken away that allowing students to have a choice of how they choose to include Indigenous perspective is really, really important. And it also allows for the shared learning of all of us, which John spoke to. Um, and this idea that it also facilitates community within our classroom and empathy, which are things that I've learned are really foundational um, amongst all cultures. Hi, my name is Monroe Fox. I am a current student here at Chinook High School. I'm right now in grade 10. So last year in grade nine, we talked about integrating indigenous perspective into uh, the grade nine curriculum. So in a short, not a short span of time, but in a few months, we had to do a novel, a few literature studies and with those components, we had to do an indigenous perspective. Now for me, I've always seen through that lens my entire life as I grew up that way in respecting the land and look and just uh, having that circle of life around everything. And for most students, it was new to, to see in that light. And for me, it was it was actually really exciting to have a, I guess, a connection to my peers that wasn't there before, and it was very, uh, it was very, I guess, hopeful. Like I've talked to my mom about it, and she she never, she would never guess that 
education would go this far into indigenous knowledge. And it's, and I hope that in the future that education can integrate more indigenous knowledge in all studies, social studies, science, English. I hope like there can be like maybe like an activity outside or a trip to the museum or have a, like an elder come in or just talk about like um, some uh, more indigenous literature. It's just just taking those, keep going forward. Okay, I'm Talmadge Conrad. I'm attending Chinook High School, graduation class 2020. Looking through an indigenous lens rather than always through your own lens, I think personally is a, is a perfect idea. I think it's always good to try and put yourself in other people's shoes, um, try and take on other perspectives when you're looking at a certain piece of text. Always has helped me. And I know in learning lessons, the fastest and easiest way for me to learn was to try and put myself, say I was in an argument with someone and I felt like I was right. I would try and put myself in their shoes to see where they were coming from and then come back into my shoes and see what I could change to make things better. Um, looking at texts through my own lens, when I get lost, I will put myself in an indigenous lens after the lesson we did last year in 20-1. And it has helped me, I connect with the indigenous lens personally better than I do with the lens of straightforward, on the line, English class because for me it's easier to pull it from I don't know I feel like when I'm looking at a text through an indigenous lens I'm pulling it from within my soul who I am where I grew up all that rather than my brain what I've been told to think throughout my whole career in school uh, moving forward I think this is a really good idea and that they should really continue with this and uh, personally, myself, my life story, I came from Carson, Alberta, which is right on the blood reserve. It's right between that reservation and the Montana border. And there was never, I wish there had been, but there was never a mix between the two cultures. And it would have, personally, I would have been really interested in being able to see through their eyes just because the contact between the two hasn't always been positive for everyone. And I wish that they could put this sort of concept in the curriculum so that everyone could, everyone could kind of mix and see where everyone's coming from so there's less conflict within the town. Hi, I'm Bill Baum. I teach uh, social studies here at Chinook High School. And I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to, about a year and a half ago, to uh, be pre um, presented with an opportunity to team teach with John Chief Calf in a Social Studies 10 Aboriginal Studies 10 course. And uh, I just dove in, kind of without really thinking about it too much. Um, and I think what I really wanted to speak about is, is sort of the importance of the work we're doing here. Um, it, it really did all start with John, but um, there really isn't, like for us as teachers, there really isn't a smooth entry point. My journey has been one of trial and error and trial and error. And I think that's intimidating to a lot of people because we want to be culturally sensitive and we want to make sure that we're, we're, we're doing the work in a way that honors um, all worldviews. But it's very hard for us. And so um, just encouraging teachers to dive in and understand that, you know, you're, you're going to make mistakes, but um, a significant part to this journey and a significant part to Blackfoot Ways of Knowing is the relationship piece. And if you can have an honest and open relationship with your students um, and, and let them know that you're also on a journey and your journey is going to be with them, um, that you're kind of walking alongside, you know, walk beside each other side by side and, um, and, and, and finding your way through that and, and making sure that you do it in a way that's respectful to everyone. It's as simple as that. Um, and, and the beauty of it is it's become contagious. I have not seen um, attitudes change um, in my classroom like I did as we went through that semester. Um, and, and, the, and the powerful part is this is part of our community and our students are really starting to connect more with our community. It's not a story that's far away. It's not a story um, that we know either. And, and watching them start to recognize their own bias and their own ignorance, as I also <laughs> recognize my own bias and my own ignorance on this, um, was part of the journey and it's okay to do that. Um, and you do have to, you have to build a relationship with the culture as well. 
uh, with indigenous cultures and in particular our Blackfoot culture as, as it is part of our local community. Um, so you have to build that relationship as well. Another very powerful um, sort of experience for me was just John's ability to, to sit back, um, relax and go, let's just, hey, let's just go have a cup of coffee and we'll, we'll talk about some things. Um, and really what I'm trying to do is, is encourage people just to have conversations about it. Conversations about what they know. Conversations about what they don't know. Conversations about the complexity of teaching this in the classroom. Um, because really, and in a strange twist of irony, we all need to lean on each other. We need to have a collective approach to this. Um, but I, I, I can only say that my experience has been incredibly powerful to the point, much like Kenny had alluded to, where my own individual life has been impacted by it. My relationship with nature, my um, thinking about relationships um, in my family, in my classroom, it's changed the way I teach. And the truth is, there might be one sort of narrow entry point for a lot of teachers, but what you'll start to yeah, you'll start to discover is that it starts to saturate everything you do because all of a sudden what you didn't think was a connection is. And as your way of knowing becomes deeper, you'll start to make connections with so many things you do in our classroom. And you'll also discover just how it, it really is a part of our society. We just didn't know it, or connect it with Blackfoot ways of knowing. And yet it is such a big part of our society. Um, and so there's huge value to that. And so we need to take on this work. It's important work. Um, and really, I hope that you just dive in and, and uh, find someone, find a partner, find a resource. And obviously, John's at the board office, but even the people on this video, reach out to us. And we are now part of that community, and we would love to share it with you.